CI, EBS, IDCS, and Azure. Uh, he is Oracle certified cloud architect, OCI, and uh, cloud DBA. He is speaker in uh, uh, delivered various uh, many sessions in so many area, so many regions, uh, right away from USA, South Africa, Middle East, and he is helping customer in their journey to the cloud. And he's also helping young graduates to achieve their dream. So I welcome you, Abhishek, in the session. Uh, Thank you, Sanjay. Friends, I feel I feel privileged actually. Today we have one more guest, and it's an honor to announce uh, Ivan. Ivan uh, uh, is a res uh, results-driven project leader with 20 plus years in IT, and due to his extensive experience in managing uh, enterprise products is having a strong ability to analyze data for key business drivers and decisions and having excellent skills in data analytics using several tools including excel yield uh, fabulous results with excel uh, reporting and he is looked up by it heads vps for critical data driven decisions so once again on behalf of kdk college of engineering department of computer science and engineering i welcome ivan Welcome, Evan. Thank you very much. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Sanjay. Thank you for the nice introduction. Uh, guys, uh, as Sanjay has already told you, my name is Abhi. Uh, I passed from Nagpur University, YCC College. And believe me, guys, I still miss my Shankarnagar, Shankarnagar tea stall. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah. So and jokes those apart. Were great days. Yeah, those <clears throat> were the fantastic days. Like you know, uh, me, uh, Sonu Sood, and uh, Sanjay, and a couple of more friends were like you know the final year batchmates. Yeah. So jokes apart, we are we as a go-to fastlane are trying to bring some of the finest people. We are trying to bring some of the finest people, gurus in IT business. So I would request you to utilize this opportunity to ask questions and learn from their experience because they all are winners and always remember, always remember winner don't do different things. They do the things differently. So with that mindset, let's just kick off this session over to you, Rama. Thank you. Uh, sure, fantastic. Thank you so much. I'll just interrupt, Rama. I'll, I'll just uh, request all the participants uh, to please unmute your video, please. It's a kind request so that we can have a good interaction with all the respected speakers. So I request once again to unmute your video at least. Thank you so much. Over to you, Rama. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, and us team. We just want you to show off on video, but not on audio. Can please mute yourselves? That'd be highly appreciated. Okay. Um, thank you. All right. With that uh, great introduction, let's get. Uh, I am hoping a lot of you were with us in the previous sessions, and hence. Uh, just a quick introduction that the uh, website where you can get more details about what we do and how we do it on the website, go to fastlane.ca. Uh, please go ahead and uh, browse the website. Give us suggestions that you might have, your creative minds might have for this website, right? So that's how we all learn and grow. So the objective of go to fastlane has been about training people, training young grads and training other people to enable them to have a successful IT career. And with that agenda in mind, this year we started uh, looking into three branches, right? One was cloud, second was data analytics, and third, third was HCM, right? As we shared in our previous sessions about cloud basics and how to convert cloud technology language into a layman's language that everybody can understand and make sense out of it, right? Today, we are going to do the same thing for data analytics. And um, having the privilege of uh, Ivan on the call, I want to remind you and the discussions that Ivan and I usually have at work and otherwise is that it is very important to be able to translate things into a readable format, right? And Ivan and I are constantly on the run to ensure we have data in a format that can be read, understood by different people at different levels. The way data is read by you will be different by the way it is read by, a, by an IT manager different by an IT director, different by an IT vice president, and ultimately by a CEO. 
you will be shocked to see the same data, right? The same data points look so different and mean so different by each IT level, right? And hence, as a data analyst, as someone, as an IT engineer, it's very important for you to understand why is data so important, right? Um, my personal experience, and those are the lessons that I have learned hard way in my career and don't want you to learn is, as an engineering graduate, someone who passed out from a premier college in India, came and started doing MBA right away in US, I was having that head weight that no, data is not something that's for me. That's for cut, that's a very cut and dry job. And that's for people who do not do well in the engineering, right? And that's what, that was my mindset when I graduated, when I completed my academic studies, right? But over the years, I have learned that that was very, very wrong mindset. An engineer can only add good value to the data, right? An engineer will only enhance the data. Your engineering skills will give it a good, good twist that it will become very rational data inputs to your executives, okay? So um, my request over there, do not think data analytics is only about creating a dashboard in Tableau, right? Or it's about creating a page that has a pie chart. No, it is about analyzing the data, okay? So with that request, uh, let's go into what is data analytics, right? So as we have done in previous sessions, if you have any questions, park your questions towards end of the session, and I'll give you enough time to ask your questions. So data analytics is an art of analyzing data, right? The very name tells you that analyze the data so that you can enhance either productivity of your team or your own productivity. And ultimately in IT organizations, it's about business throughput and business productivity, right? So how do you analyze the data such that you can get information that is hidden in the data, okay? Right, you generate reports out of the data. So let's, um, we'll go through the slides, but let's uh, take some examples here. What is the first data point that comes to your mind, right? Um, just like somebody tells me, okay, tell me a data point. The first thing that comes to your mind is my date of birth, right? It's my birthday, always. Comes every year, very special day to me, and that's what I want everybody to know. Say my birthday is on 1st January, right? That's what comes to my mind. And that data point is extremely important to me as an individual because January 1st is my birthday, right? Now take the same data point for your parents, right? Now we're going one level up. Now January 1st is definitely very important for them because you were born to them, but at the same time, the year in which you were born is equally important for them because they might have three children born in different years on the same date or different dates, right? So what you did is now you added January 1st with the year 2000 to add a dimension to the data and present the data with some more details, right? Now this date of birth of January 1st, 2000 is a data point, right? With two, dim two dimensions, right? And being able to give infer, being able to give you information about, now it's your age, right? Now from date of birth, you derived age. Now when this age parameter goes into your class, you have a class of 40 students to your school principal, all the students of the age of 10 years are in this classroom, right? So this data has been now extrapolated one level higher to provide you greater information about all the students in class 10 are this year, are, are of this age, right? But when this data gets elevated one level up, right? Now one level up is to the government sources, right? What does it become? Anybody who is, 18 years and above is eligible to vote, is eligible to get a driver's license, is eligible to do multiple things, right? So now this data, same information, January 1st, 2000 has been elevated, aggregated and aggregated into another piece of information now that which is used by the federal sources to determine how many people are going to apply for new driver's license applications this year, potentially, right? So that's how the same piece of data, we started with January 1st, and now we are at a government agency who is trying to determine what are the number, of, who are the total driver license applicants, new applicants as well, right? So what, what happened here in this process from January 1st, 2000, starting with me, right, to all the way up to the federal agency? In this process, somebody went analyzing this data step by step, generated, or exposed hidden information 
added more dimensions to the data and generated reports for the federal agencies to use, right? So that is the power of data analytics, okay? In data analytics, what you additionally also do is you perform market analysis. Now, these are the concepts that for you as IT engineers is very important to understand, right? That, yes, with this data, now let's take an example of market analysis. Um, some of you, your guardians, would be investing in the stock market, correct? So in the stock market is a classic example. You buy a share today for $20 a share, right? And you keep tracking the share. Um, okay, um, excuse me, participants. I don't know who has master control here, but can you please not edit the file on the screen? And I will check in the future not to have master control for everybody. All right, um, sorry for that interruption. So in market analysis, right? So say you buy a share today for $20, $20, right? And what you do after buying a share is you go ahead and keep tracking the growth of the share, right? Until a point that you find that yes, there is no more bull, no more bear over here. This is the right time to maybe sell it, right? The market is good, let me buy some more today. So how do you get the data? All that you are able to make a decision based on the price of the stock when you bought, trend analysis over a period of time, and then trend analysis based on this data against your own personal financial goals, right? So what, what data analytics does is it helps you drive business success when it's combined with operational management. So what you did here is you said, I have a budget of $500 per month on stock market. I got 20 shares, $20 each. I have $100, but I want to save it because I want to buy another stock next month for $200, right? So that means you have 400 and you've already spent 400, right? So what you're doing is you're managing your daily operations. When you convert this into projects, right? When you convert into projects, it's called operations management, right? How do you manage the execution of a project how you manage the execution of an IT organization. Let's take an example, another example of my own company, right? Go to Fastlane, uh, as I shared with you earlier, right? We were operating as a different entity four years ago when we were operating in South Africa, right? And US. So we had an entity uh, and then we moved over to go to Fastlane, right? Now, when we came over to go to Fast, Fastlane, we took some feedback and lessons learned from our previous organization, right? PoetryIT.com and moved it on to go to Fastlane's operations, right? And to do that, what we did is we took data points. Hey, in PoetryIT.com, we had these many sessions for these kind of students. And this is the return that we got from those students. These students got placed. These students did not get placed. What is the profile that we have to look at and invest our time, right? That's one dimension of operations management of my organization, right, that I look at. Second dimension is that, okay, fine. These are the kind of profiles that I get, which who are my investors, right? What is my investor profiles? What is the data that I'm getting for my investors in South Africa versus in US? And how do I take this over along with me to manage the operations of go to fast lane? Okay, so I am able to make those decisions and drive my business, not only to a dimension where I'm contributing to the society by talking to people like this, like you, but also growing on a financial front because I need to pay my bills as well, right? So my operations management of having $400 a month or $500 a month is a decision that I can take based on the data available, okay? So it's very important for all of you to understand the importance of data, okay? There are different models that we will be used for data analysis in IT projects and data is useful for everybody, right? So do not limit yourself to the thought of Tableau being the only source. Hey, if I know Oracle Analytics, then I know data, no. You have to start learning data analysis, not tools. These tools are only going to help. These tools are only going to be, you know, one tool will give you three lanes on a screen. This is your data model. This is your uh, ETL layer, and this is your presentation layer, right? Tableau will give you the same thing in three different windows. It will say, hey, open this to get into the developer mode, open this to get into the business modeling mode, right? But what is important to understand is 
what is data and how is the data needed to be represented, okay? We'll use different models for anal analyzing data and all of those models are something that you have studied in your engineering, right? All of you have studied what is mode, what is median, what is interquartile, what is a range, what is standard deviation, right? All those concepts are very important for you to refresh. And in this presentation, there are some slides in the appendix for that, right? Uh, so you might think today, and I used to think that way, right? When I passed out from my engineering, that whatever I study in engineering is not useful in IT. And initially you will feel that for the first three, four years, right? Because somebody is telling you what to do and you keep doing it. But over the period of time, you'll realize that, no, hey, this is what I studied as standard deviation. And my manager is asking me to do a variance analysis. He might not be asking me to do a formula of a variance, but all he's asking me is to apply a statistical model to get a variance, get a deviation, right? So all those concepts are extremely important for you to know. A quick brief here on what branches of statistics that you will typically use um, within data analytics, right? So one is descriptive and another is inferential. Both of it will be used in your IT industry in statistics. Okay? Let's go through some of the features of descriptive first and then to inferential. In case of descriptive statistics, descriptive statistics is concerned with the properties of the population. Okay, how many men in in a community? How many women in a community? Right. This is property of a population. How many engineers? How many computer science graduates? How many electronics engineers passing out of KDK? Right. This is a data point. But when you infer infer, conclude, derive information, it becomes an inferential statistics, right? Now, what will be inferential statistics for you in this case will be out of 80% of the women living in this community or living in this neighborhood, living in this zip code are working for a company for minimum 40 hours and earning wages of minimum $40,000 a year, right? 80% of the students passing out of KDK get a job within six months of uh, degree, right? Those are the inferences that you derive, right? So descriptive statistics gives you what data points and inferential statistics makes you think about it, right? It, inferential statistics will also let you compare, okay? Now this data, which you said, uh, 80% of the women living in the zip code earn more than $40,000 a year, right? And now you will do a trend analysis on it, saying over the last five years, right? In the year 2015, 80% of the women working in this zip code were earning more than $40,000 a year. However, in the year 2020, 80% of the women working in the zip code are earning more than $60,000 per annum, right? So now you are comparing, right? And what you will also do is hence, right? Hence in the year 2025, possibly at the same, everything else stays the same. You would have 80% of the women earning more than 80,000 a year who live in this neighborhood, right? So comparing, predicting the outcomes, right? And this is how it is used in your IT industry. Now, let's take an example of um, something that we will do in this slide, right? Of an issues in an IT implementation. We implemented a project as typical SDLC and you find issues. Now, first five days, you get 100 issues. So my manager is now looking at, in first 100 days, I got, no, oh, sorry, in first five days, we got 100 issues. So does this mean in the next five days, I'll also get 100 issues if everything else stays the same, right? So it gives him a parameter, a matrix, a projection to infer conclusion from the given data, okay? So it's very important for you to understand and uh, understand data and be able to present useful information, meaningful information out of that data, okay? Please read through the slide when you get it. Um, in data visualize, now in data, right? Few things that I have been actually working with some of you this week uh, to see what's your mindset on presentations, right? On data. What I found is that all of you were very um, deeply involved into 
presentation of data, right? You were all about graphs. You were all about comparisons. And I don't know from where you got all that fancy stuff, but it was very nice. Like somebody sent me a nice pie chart. Another person sent me like five graphs put together into one screen. And when we invite Ivan to speak, he's going to tell you it's very painful to do that if you have to do it yourself until you understand data, right? You have to understand data, not just dump the charts out there. So data visualization, yes, it is about charts. It's about diagrams, but it has to be meaningful visualization, right? And you can have meaningful visualization only when you have good data, right? So data cleansing is extremely important. In fact, one of my teams right now is solely focusing on cleansing of data gathered from about 180 different sources, right? So when 180 different data sources provide you information, the data quality is anywhere always questionable because everybody has a different format. Now, let me give you an example of this group itself. Right, so uh, Dr. Sanjay created a webinar form for all of you to register, right? So when I looked at the registration form, there were certain fields for you to populate, like your name, your roll number, your year, year, your name, and your email address. But when we received the data, right, the data was received in a format which will tell you the importance of data analytics, okay? Many of you did not put your role numbers. Many of you did not put your email address. Many of you did not even put your name in there, right? So what is the point of that data, right? So that data is not useful. And I'm gonna bring up that file so all of you understand a live example of data analytics from what you just sent us, right? And what you should have sent us, right? And those things matter in terms of data quality and data analytics, right? So I'm sharing my screen again to show you what, what we was expected out of you and what you gave us, okay? So this is how we received the uh, responses, right? Some people, okay, we have date, we have time, we have email address, name and roll number, great. Now let's keep going down, okay? Look at this, right? What do I, what do I derive out of this information? Like literally nothing, correct? So this is an example of data, anal data cleansing. So if you do not give us good data, there is no way that we can give you good information back. So as a data analyst, it is your responsibility. And now in this case, it's my responsibility to read that file that you sent us, right? And conclude, hey, who would have joined? Does this person really need help? Maybe he's not interested. That's why he did not want to share his information, right? So what will happen is, the bottom section, the people who did not give us their email address will not be added to our mail distribution list and hence will not get for further communication. It could be someone who actually wanted help, right? But what you did is because of bad data, you reduced your chances of success, right? It's the same thing that happens in IT industry, right? If we do not give all the data and points and ex uh, to the executives, they might not make a right decision for your IT organization. Right, just the way now I'm going to do, right? I'm going to chop off all the people who did, did not give me the email address and not contact them, right, for future sessions because my time is important, right? Likewise, an IT executive's time is very important. You cannot give them junk data, right? Because they are just going to trash it away, right? So just understand that the data cleansing is very important, right? Next is the art of data manipulation. Now, data manipulation is about how do you present this data in a format that is useful, right? And not presentation. Before presentation, you all of you in your engineering would have studied ETLs, right? You transform the data. That is data manipulation. Now, in this example, right, how would we transform the data? I am going to extract this file, get this PDF into an Excel, right? Extract all the email addresses, add them to the master distribution list that I have for students, right? In this file, I'm going to see if anybody else has given me a phone number and has a WhatsApp account. And if my official WhatsApp account gets connected to them and they send me the email address, I'm still manipulating based on the information that's available to derive, to derive and to be able to make a business decision, right? That do I want to continue with these students or not? 
right? So likewise, this is how it works in IT industry. Different tools and frameworks are available. So my request to you is not to get stuck with the tool, right? Have that mind frame of data analytics before you get into tools. We will go into tools, right? Our subsequent sessions will talk about, we'll start with Oracle Analytics, move to Tableau, move to Cognos and some bit of Power BI as well. But let's start having the right mindset that yes, data, analyzing data is important, not the tools, okay? The multiple frameworks, tools, technologies, databases available where you can do these activities, okay? But what's important is that you understand that as a data analyst, irrespective of your title, every person is a data analyst in IT industry. I am a data analyst to date and I will continue to be one. You will see that the VPs, the executives, one person that I look up to a lot and, and I talk a lot with my parents and my family, right, is Sundar, Sundar Pichai, right? So he is such a core data analyst. Today you see a data point about Google, right? And tomorrow, in about a week's time, you'll have a declaration saying that, hey, this is what we're doing. How is he able to quickly make decisions? One, because his in team gives him data in a format that he can immediately, quickly use to make business decisions, right? Second, he himself is a data analyst. He's an amazing data analyst. He looks at the data and makes decisions really on the fly. You will see that tendency with a lot of executives in San Francisco area, at least those who I look up to, right? Uh, Larry Allison from Oracle, amazing with data, amazing. He started this program for entrepreneurs two years ago. And one of my mentors, Reggie Bradford, was part of that, was leading that initiative. Unfortunately, Reggie passed away um, a year ago because of cancer. But he was, when he was leading this, right, and talking to these people is so amazing. So in one of my meetings with uh, Reggie Bradford, he told me what I was not doing right. He looked at my proposal, right? He said, you know what, Rama? No, this stands nowhere of what I need in terms of data. So what got me into a setback that day was that I had not done data analysis enough for Reggie Bradford and Larry Ellison, right? So if, and, and then of course I got guidance and I improved on it, right? It was two years ago. But the um, but point I'm trying to make over here is if those people take pride in data analysis, all of you should take pride and don't think that it's a cut and dry job which doesn't need any skills, okay? Um, Ivan, I think this is very appropriate point for uh, time for me um, to request you to share your insights and your experience, right, in IT industry with respect to data, importance of data, how you analyze and work with data on a day-to-day -day basis, and how these young grads should also think the way you and I think today. Thank you, Rama. So let, let me let me go back to 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 a few points that Rama touched on, right? The the, the importance of data. The importance of not only you know garbage in and garbage out. So whatever you're doing, uh, 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 you're getting collecting your data. From the point you collect your data, you have to know that it's not going to be all there, right? You have to know that you have to clean it. You have to ask questions on: Is this capital? Is it all going to be capitals? Is it this lowercase, uppercase, all that, right? So that's the first thing. So the second thing is. How are you going to tell the story? I think one of the things that uh, Rama and I have been really working on for the last uh, weeks has been how do we tell the story? And every time we look at this charge, every time we look at the story, it improves. And it doesn't improve, the data doesn't change, meaning the fields are the fields, right? They're static. Um, what changes is the data within those fields, of course, uh, and it keeps growing. But the fact is we keep evolving on our ideas on how to tell that story so again when you're looking at data it's going to evolve by nature and and you have to evolve with it so you have to be able to tell that story so uh, let me let me let me go back to something that uh, rama said in the past i mean uh, just a few minutes ago was about um data data analysts are not just it's just not a role. It's not not just you know something that you're just gonna do in and just do it once and you know doesn't take a lot of brain power to do it. Uh, it does. 
it does. So let me let me let me start by re reiterating the garbage in, garbage out. Then you do tell the story, and so then you have to be a little creative with how you're gonna present that, right? You cannot just do two, three charts and let it go, right? Does that answer business questions? When I meet with uh, C-level uh, people, I have to state things in a very, very one bullet point statement. And it has to be impactful enough for them to either ask more questions or not ask questions. So when, I, when I'm using data, you have to do the same thing. Uh, one of the things that we're going through with Rama right now is uh, let, let's look at our audience right here. Like, like we have a, a, a project team, IT mixed with business. What are they looking for? What do each one of them want? What would they want to know with this data? Because it's useful. Uh, the IT um, leaders can know how the progress on something. But the manager or the business um, uh, manager might know, might want to know what that he says specific function function is doing. How's it doing? What does he need to improve or do more training? So one data set it's, it's spreading into different areas and different needs, and it's the same single data set. Again, if you don't keep up with your data, you're not going to be able to tell that good story, right? So to, to Rama's example, without your email addresses, she's not going to be able to send you the email, right? It's just factual. Um, so be created as in present it, whether it is a table, whether it is a graph, whether it is a gadget, it doesn't matter. Uh, how you present it is what that data tells you. So if I do a number versus a chart, a chart might be able to give me more information, but is that what I want to give the, the audience? Do I want to give them that much information? Or do you just want to give them a number? Uh, total number of cases, boom. Instead of cases by, by the, uh, progress or category. Um, so lastly, um, and, and I don't, I don't want to bore you with, with a lot of examples in my, in my career, but I'm going to tell you uh, just one of them, very, very simple. Um, when you make mistakes, you learn. And I believe that you learn faster than when, you, when you're in school. You look at the textbook, you go with it, you go with what people tell you. But when you're in the field, mistakes will make you be a better professional. So don't be afraid of making mistakes. Don't make too many mistakes, right? But don't be afraid of making <laughs> mistakes. <laughs> um, why? Because it may, it's going to expand your knowledge, right? It's going to make you think a little better. How am I able to come to you uh, after all this time and, and tell you uh, my experience with data has been basically, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Tell the story. Be creative and know your audience, right? So those four key things apply not only to data, if you think about it, it they do apply in business in general. So when you're out there, you, this, uh, this is the lesson that you're gonna take with you, not only just to do to data, but to in your career. Um, but but we're, because the topic is data, let's think about this. When you have bad data, what are you gonna give a bad report? So let's go back to the beginning, guys. Uh, this is very simple uh, when it comes to the tool. It doesn't matter what tool you use, you're still gonna do the same thing. If you have bad data and you use Tableau, the report is gonna look bad. If you use Excel and you, and you have the same report, it's gonna look bad. So again, don't, don't, get, uh, don't get too into the, the tool. The tool is just there to make it all happen for you. But, but truly, you follow those four principles and you should be okay on anything that you do when it comes to any projects and, and in your careers, right? So I wanna close it with the message of, um, you know, um, be curious, ask questions. Um, I, I think it's important as a student, I, I, I was a student once, uh, it is important as a student to always be 
uh, curious, right? Because that's what drives you. That's what makes you better. That's what makes you have a, a gain a different skill every time, every class. So without any more, um, uh, thank you for inviting me, Rama, uh, uh, faculty, appreciate it. I uh, hope my message was, uh, was good, hopefully. Uh, again, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ivan. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm going to latch on to what Ivan said and continue on the same, right? So he did tell you about being curious, right? And two things, messages that I took out from Ivan's was um, garbage in, garbage out, and be curious and creative, right? So with respect of the tool that you use, whether you use Excel, the traditional method, or you use Tableau, use if you garbage in if you do not do data cleansing if you give me bad data i will spit out bad data right so it's very important for you to have data cleansing as a first step in any analysis of the data right so irrespective of the method you use and over here i want to call out for um for soha who created this slide for us and to avni who created the entire tech for us put together the tech for us so thank you guys, because uh, without your help, I would not be able to get this, put this together. So thank you. So in this slide, what Soham is trying to show us is, um, in a traditional method, which Soham thinks is traditional, right, is that you have Excel, you create tables, charts, and graphs. But when you come to Tableau, what Soham thinks is that we get some powerful visual analysis, right? And I can put this data into Excel, into cloud, into databases, right? Which is all correct. Right. So this nothing on this slide is incorrect, except for the fact that it's very important for you to understand that Tableau is almost Excel. Right. I can prove to you that Tableau and Excel are almost replaceable for most of the business situations. Now, I'm not talking about large IT uh, enterprises or sorry, large business enterprises where the volume of data is so high that you cannot accommodate it in Excel. And every tool has its own limitations, right? You will have Tableau with its limitations. Likewise, you have Excel with its limitations. Okay, so um, great presentation, great slide there. Uh, so when, I don't know who is doing this writing on the slides and I'm not able to remove it. Like people are doing some fantastic curious stuff on my slides while I'm presenting and I can't figure out how to stop them. But, um, but good, that's all great, right? So you're trying to play around with the slides. So, so um, good work on the slide. So with this, what I want to latch on to what Ivan said, right? Garbage in, garbage out. What we are going to do as an assignment today in the session is work on the traditional method. That Soham, one of your friends, thinks is very traditional, okay? But he, because he wants to get right into Tableau. He also shared a very nice presentation in Tableau based on the knowledge that he acquired on Tableau from various sessions, right? Again, I will request all of you to not forget that fundamentals are very important, right? Traditional methods are very important for you to know, to get that spark in your mind of what to analyze, okay? So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna give you an assignment on Excel, right? The traditional method, um, okay. Um, on the traditional method, right of Excel. So um, I'm going to open an Excel file over here and Ivan and I are going to tag team to walk you through this assignment. And this is one of our favorite activities that Ivan and I do together, right? Analyze data, bring it mean, make it meaningful. Almost every evening, Ivan and I brainstorm, how can we give something else that would be more meaningful to drive progress and drive the whole initiative to a success, right? I'm not talking about this initiative, I'm talking about other initiatives, right? So, uh, so what, what you have in as, a, as an assignment will be to give me some data elements, right? How I need it. But also at the same time, I'm gonna show you one case, all right? So let's go ahead and uh, look into Excel, right? So um, Abhishek, um, Avni, do you guys know how to get rid of this? I don't know who's painting on my screen, it's kind of, very distracting. I hope it's not distracting for all of you. No, Avni Abhishek don't know how to do that. All right, no worries. All right, so let's look at the data here, right? So uh, I have 240 rows of data, right? Which has issue number, um, 
which has issue number, issue description, department, work stream, priority, status, date identified, and date resolved. Okay. This is a set of data that actually Ivan and I are working on for a different project right now. Okay. And this is a sample of the same data, of course, with manipulated dates and information. Okay. So what we want to do over here is your assignment is to get me data in this format. Okay. I want you to tell me all the issues, right? All the issues which have a status of closed, right? And by what priority is there is the closed status? Okay. I want to know that. So let's see the first assignment is open issues by priority in table and graphical format. Okay, so let's do that. Um, anybody wants to volunteer or I can show one and we can take volunteers later. All right, so um, Okay. Uh, Dr. Sanjay, Dr. Ajay, what do you want to do? Shall I go ahead and uh, show one or you want to volunteer somebody who can walk me through and we'll do it as an interactive session? Dr. Sanjay. Uh, you how to proceed. Uh, I think Rama, one, one test case you can show and rest three I can send it across to Sanju so that the okay. students can do their job. Okay. Do that assignment. First, first right. show them once. Okay. And Abhi, sure. one more thing, Abhi, why this line has come means is there any way out to remove this line? Yeah. He, yeah somebody, easy. somebody has like, you know, got the control and uh, he, he tried to copy or uh, means like cut the slide. And that's why that. Uh, that has to be removed by the person who has. Uh, no, no, it's gone. It's gone. Okay, fine. All right. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. Done. Done. Yeah. But uh, next time we will remove the, uh, like, you know, uh, host privileges from them. But this should not happen. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Yep. All right. So, so we have 240 rows of data. What is the objective? The objective is, so the objective is to find, and Ivan, please tag team with me over here. So Ivan, what I'm trying to do over here is that I'm trying to find all the uh, closed issues, right? Segregated by priorities. Uh, yeah, by priorities for now. Okay. Okay. So that's our uh, that's our question problem statement right now. So the problem statement is to find all the issues, the number of issues which are closed, segregated or categorized by the priority. Straightforward. And uh, uh, Rama, just a suggestion, like you know, ask the students, did they get the problem statement? What we are trying to achieve here, Sanju? Uh, uh, can you ask the people, like you know, did they get the problem statement? You, 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 uh, Abhi, you go ahead with me. no issue. Okay. Hello, you can have the interaction with this. Student. Yeah, Rama, Rama, you can talk to the students yeah. also. Yeah, no problem. All right, so let's go through the uh, problem statement. So, number of closed issues, right, by priority. So, um, how do you do that? Is there's a feature in Excel uh, which is called the pivot tables, right? So, we're going to use pivot tables for this feature. Right, and um, I will stop me if I do something fancy, which is not appropriate for the interns. So how you do it is you select the data and you select the data that is in your range, right? You can also over here select external data sources. And this is to the point where um, Soham created a slide saying Excel is extremely traditional and he likes to use databases with Tableau but we can also have external data sources in Excel, okay. right? Choose where you want to do this pivot sheet. We'll do it in a new worksheet, all right? So this is where you do the work. Uh, you got a sample, a template of a pivot table, all right? So what we're gonna do first is we're going to have the, so the objective is to get the number of closed issues by priority, right? So that means you want to get the number of issues. So first thing is, the value that you want to get, right? And this is where I say the importance of understanding the data is important, what goes where, okay? Value field settings, go to count, select count. So total number of issues in this file today are 239, all right? Next, we have to find all the closed issues by priority. Let's see how many priorities are there. So it tells me that there are about five priorities. E, P1, P2, P3, and P4. And this is a blank row because it selected all the data elements. All right? 
So this is the total number of priorities. Next is we have to find out how many are closed in these priorities, right? So that means you want a status of closed. I'm going to put it as a report filter to say a status of closed. Okay, say an okay. So 182 issues are closed from this data file, right? Of these priorities, right? So even if this was 24,000 rows, it would be so easy for you to create this pivot table, right? And do you want to add something here? I just wanted to point out, you know, Excel, and, and, and I know that many of you are probably thinking, you know, this is simple, this is Excel, right? You almost grow up with it, right? This is almost like uh, giving a child uh, an iPad and uh, just letting, see, letting him see how he just touches everything, right? Um, but but there's, there's something interesting, right? Uh, amazingly, uh, you will encounter in your career of people that you, you, they don't have that knowledge. They have other knowledge. They, they can manipulate other tools, SQL, uh, Tableau, you name it, right? But they lack that simple skill in Excel. And, that, and this is a skill that is good to have. So, so bear with us. We're not trying to uh, um, teach you Excel. We're just trying to point out how you can uh, get to the data and how you can visualize it. So I just wanted to make that statement on, you know, what you're seeing, it's not a full class in Excel. We're not, we're not trying to do that. We're trying to get to that point of how do we get that data and how do we answer that question? Correct, absolutely. Thanks, Thanks Ivan. And from this data, you have features like pivot chart, right? Which will be really quick to show you how the data works, right? And what is the data? So different, now the same information has been presented in a format which is very easy for you to read and understand that, oh, looks like P3s and P2s are high. Let me have my team work on these issues rather than focusing on other, other ones, right? But in this case, it's closed. Now, now this is for all the closed issues. Now what the executive is going to think about is, hmm, the team closed 22 P1s, good amount of P2s and P3 closed. I'm happy about it. Right, but what is the next question that comes to the mind of an executive? How many P1, P2s are open that the team should be working on? Right, and that is your assignment. Mm -hmm. right? In your assignment, what you're going to do is you're going to give me the same information by status and priority. Right now, you're going to add another dimension to it. Over here, we had only one dimension. Right, the dimension was priority and the count of issues. What you're going to do is you're going to add another dimension such that your status is going to be over here, that is in your x-axis, right? And your priority is going to be in your y-axis, okay? And, and if I may, Rama, um, to, to, to what you're doing right now, you know, um, let's remember those four fundamentals, right? So, so how you present the data, anticipating those questions are key here, right? So what Rama is just doing there is telling you okay, how many charts and how many different ways of visualizing and how many questions can you answer with this data? With just that simple pivot table, how many, how many questions can you answer for a business uh, person? And how can you present that, right? Because there's so much to tell just, just, in, this, just in this slide, just in this uh, chart. Sorry, Roma. Yes, yes, very important, right? So seeing this chart, I understood what are the clues but I also got curious about what is open, right? So I'm trying to over here proactively answer another business question, right? Which is what is open? What is it that I need to do to allocate resources to work? How much time do I need to ask you as an IT analyst to work for the next week to close remaining open issues, right? So it's very important for you to look at, um, at the data in a very sensitive manner and respect the data. Right, I always say respect the data if you want data to become information, right? And use it as a weapon, it's very powerful information. Okay, so with this data, you, uh, the assignments that I have chosen for you is to give me a data in this format, right? So one is find the open issues by priority and status, uh, by status and priority in a tabular format and in a graphical format, right? Then you tell me the issues by each department, now the data, business reporting, 
you know, different departments, give me by that. Then close issues by department in a table and a graphical format, is something that we can really do quickly here, right? So now you have closed issues and you want to add a department dimension, right? So what you're gonna do is you're going to do a department. So it tells me by business, I have 151, by infrastructure I have 10 and by reporting has 42 total issues. Out of these, how many issues are closed? I, I can go ahead and do a filter here itself on my, on my status column, right? You see how you can play with the data and get information out of it, right? So try doing this assignment. And the last assignment might is on the cumulative totals, right? What is all the issues open and all the issues closed as of today? So now if you look at the data, the data does have date identified and date resolved, okay? How many issues were closed as of 725? How many issues were open as of 727? How many were closed as of 727, right? And your output should look something like this, okay? So this is the assignment that I want to leave this team with uh, today and I'll share the inputs, um, the file with Dr. Sanjay and he can pass it on to all of you. And we can also, the emails that we have got, we'll pass it to you as well, right? So great, so this is the assignment that we want to do. Um, taking this forward, right? Uh, next session will focus on solving this problem that we had in case somebody of, any one of you had a trouble. And then we'll go into some other fundamental concepts of data analytics, frameworks and tools, right? And we'll start with some of the data warehouse concepts, like what is a fact, measure, dimension, right? Then, so I had a very nice slide on data, databases, cloud APIs and Excel, right? So we're gonna dive into what does this integration mean, right? What are the different data sources that you can have in a, in a data warehouse or in any data analytics tool, right? What are the different ETL concepts and different modeling concepts that we have in data analytics, right? So next session is also gonna focus on concepts, but we're gonna go through these, some of these, some of the data warehouse concepts and ETL concepts, okay? All right. Um, I know we had a slide on machine learning um, as a concept that I don't think we have a lot of time today and we're gonna skip this, but we'll do a, another session exclusively on machine learning, right, as a concept which, um, enhances the ability and experience of learning, right? And being able to automate programs and generate output, right? Uh, we'll have another session since we're at time right now. Um, so these were the concepts that we wanna talk about data analytics basics. And next, one request out here to this group, right? While we are doing this initiative for all of you and with a sole um, agenda in mind to help all of you, right? And have some, uh, good connections and network. I'm very pleased to be connected with Dr. Sanjay, Dr. Ajay, right? So uh, Dr. Praveen last time, we also met him. So it's, it's great for, for me to network. And I want to give you same networking opportunity, right? To go ahead and work with our team, right? The team who's already working with us. So we're looking to onboard a lot of people right now. And we have currently two technical ambassadors in our team and we have four associate technical ambassadors. We are definitely, as you can see, we're definitely planning to expand our team and need um, good people who have willingness to work, right? Um, there is no need for me, Ivan or Abhishek to come and wake up early morning on a weekend and do this, right? It's, we are doing this because of, we, we want to, right? Because of that willingness. If you have that willingness, please come and reach out to us and we can help you, right? So, but if it's just a time pass for you, if it's yet another session that your parents are asking you to attend or your teachers are asking you to attend, please feel free to excuse us and excuse yourself, okay? Um, if you want to learn more about us, about what we do, about other events that we do, um, go ahead and follow our website on LinkedIn right? If you don't have a LinkedIn account, please go ahead and create one. We have events where you can go ahead and register, uh, including tomorrow's session on, uh, on cloud concepts of infrastructure, right? Please go ahead and do that. Follow us on LinkedIn. It will help you and help us create some brand awareness around to go to Fastlane. And next time at the beginning of the session itself, I would request all of you to confirm to me that you have indeed followed us on LinkedIn, right? Um, it's a simple token of gratitude that will tell me that, yes, you are thankful for my time. Okay. Um, this is um, another special offer that I give to my attendees and I started only last week was to be able to go ahead and use the title of Associate Technical Ambassador.
register. I got a person registered into this last week. Uh, her name is Dipali. And um, congratulations, Dipali, for getting associated, right? And as you will, as the weeks pass on, we will, you and I and others will have more and more interaction to get you on board with what we do, right? And also contribute to um, go to fast lane. So congratulations, Dipali, on that. But if any one of you wants to do that, please go ahead and get yourself associated with go to fast lane. Um, we do not charge for it, right? So it just helps you get more visibility into the recruiter community and um, other IT professionals. So there are the steps which you can follow to do that. Um, and these are some of the WhatsApp groups that we have for, the, for all of you to stay connected with each other. Okay. Um, all right, so this is, and as I said, there are some appendix slides on statistics, which you can always use for your reference. All right, so. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, Rama. Uh, I think we have a couple of questions. Uh, first one is for uh, Ivan. Is it possible to connect live data sources to Excel? Vipul, Vipul has asked this question. Ivan, uh, is it possible to connect live data sources to Excel? Yes, it is. But here's here's the problem with that. As um, as I have experienced by making mistakes, uh, um, when you do that, it has to be in the same language. And even if it is in the same language, and I mean, uh, if you're using Excel, you by default you want to use SharePoint, right? Uh, Connected with SharePoint, for example. If you do that, there will be issues. So there will be connection issues. There will be translation issues. So um, yes, it is possible. Uh, in my experience, it has been painful, um, but that might not be your case. <laughs> okay. Rama, you want to add something to that? Uh, no, absolutely. He said it bang on, right? So there is, no. um, mm -hmm. as I said every tool and every framework has limitations, right? Mm -hmm. And has different purpose. So while it's okay. absolutely possible for Excel to get connected to live databases, mm -hmm. And we all we do it all the time, right? But how much is the volume of the data that you're trying to translate in Excel is very important, right? Mm -hmm. How frequently mm -hmm. do you want to refresh? You can absolutely have a Power BI dashboard, get connected to Excel and spit out reports in Excel. And we do it in our projects. But the volume has to be a manageable number of data. If you're talking about millions of rows, it is um, extremely um, inefficient and highly recommended not to use Excel for millions of rows of data translation because you need a storage of data. And in those cases, databases serve as the best store of data in even more than Java beans, right? Store the data in the databases and then read from those databases using different tools. And for millions of rows, it's very important to have a data warehouse in place, right? To track the incremental changes on the data. Yeah. So, Rama, next question is for you, like, you know, uh, uh, the Mark from, like, I think he's, uh, he's from DC. I want to know how is data analytics different from data analysis? That's a good question. Yeah. That's English. I would probably do a, need to do a Google. So data analytics is a branch of data analysis, which lets you not only do analyze the data, but also manipulate and present the data. So data analysis does not necessarily uh, deal with presentation and the visualization, but different data analytics, right? But data analytics also talks about visualization and that's where all the tools that you see, right? Are built on the concepts of data analysis and data visualization, like Tableau. You can analyze the data in Tableau and Tableau will also let you spit out a beautiful graph like the Excel example that we had, right? You had data, you analyze the data using the pivot table, but how you present the data is data analytics. Does that help? Yeah, yeah. thanks. Uh, he, in addition to that, he also asked like, you know, uh, which computer software and tools, including a scripting language, query language, and a statical language, I should start learning to prepare myself for this role. So I think so, like, uh, yeah, Rama, go ahead, please. Um, my response would be slow down. And that's the whole idea of doing this session, right? Um, yeah. We want, we always want to jump into a query language because we think that as engineers, all we need to know is C++. We need to know Java. Now we need to know .NET. Now we need to know this. But in that, we just end up becoming coders and not ID leaders, right? Yeah. And how 
you want to see your career growing is as an IT leader and not as an IT coder, mm-hmm. right? A coder needs to have a data analysis skill. So focus, uh, so Mark, my, my suggestion to you will be, yes, there are multiple um, query languages, right? You also have some languages which are single word languages, singular languages like R, right? You have different tools, but what you want to focus on is, are you able to analyze the data? And that is what you should focus on Make yourself comfortable with data. I have seen a lot of people who get overwhelmed with data. And Ivan, you can share some examples of um, a few of the people that we have met in the last two to three weeks, right, for an interview that we were doing together. People are scared of data. They are scared. They're shit scared of data. The moment they see more than 2,000 rows, they get overwhelmed. They start sweating because they don't know what to do with the data, right? Ivan, do you want to add something there from our experience in the last three to four weeks on interviews? Um, no, no. I mean, I think yes, you got you got that right. Uh, uh, to the point that uh, we, when you know, one of the those candidates answer um, basically saying that uh, in order for uh, you know for her to come up with the answer, she was going to count every single item one by yeah. one. And, and it was like, what? Wait, hold on a second. We're giving you a data set. You're going to count it? Um, right. And one by one. Possibly count 3,000 rows. Right. 5,000 rows. So, yes. Um, so, it's very important. What we're trying to tell you, Mark, here is that um, languages are very important, but get comfortable with data first, right? Uh, play with data in the small little tools and then translate it to big. Uh, yeah. You wanted to add something there. Um, I think like, you know, uh, if you want to learn more about like technical stuff, Python can help you as a scripting language. And if you, if you are aware about SQL, Hive, Pig, those are the query language you can use or for a statical purpose, you can use R, SAS and SPSSS. I think these are the three languages you can use. Another question we have is like, can we use data analytics in networking data? Uh, that that I can take care, of, Rama. Sure. Uh, Dushant, uh, Dushant uh, you know, data analytics can be used anywhere. Anything, if you are reading or analyzing any kind of data, which is for your organization, you can utilize it. Networking, how many you can see in terms of like, you know, how many packets are going throughout the network, like how many packets are uh, getting lost during the transformation you can see like how the encryptions, how many, how much data is getting encrypted, what kind of DAS or 256 encryptions you are using. So of course, to, to put more precisely, you can use data analytics in your networking also. Yep, I think this, this is the number of questions I have. I can pass it on to Sanjay. Uh, Dr. Sanjay, over to you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Rama and Abhishek, and special thanks to Ivan for being 